Okay, so in this video, we're going to be making an abstract still life. We're going to be playing with some interesting objects and some moody lighting. So let's get into it. So this is the render we're going to be making. If you make it, I encourage you to send it to me on Instagram. I'm going to link this in the description. Send it over to me. A lot of you guys have been sending me your stuff. So let's get into the tutorial. So first, we're going to hit Shift A and add a plane. I have to apologize for the screencast keys. You can see down here when I hit a key, it does things. But when I hit something like on the number pad, it doesn't do very well. So hopefully 2.8 has a better screencast keys add on in the future. And those really help for these tutorials. But for now, I apologize. It's not a very good one. So we're going to hit H and hide this for now. And let's add in our cube, shift A and add the cube. Now we want the anchor point to be at the very bottom here, not in the middle, because that's going to mess us up when we start making this shape. So to do that, you hit tab and click the transform icon right over here, hold control and bring it up. And now the anchor point is right at the bottom. You can see it stays right there and that's what we need. All right, now let's go back into edit mode, go up here to face select, select the top one and just bring it down to right about there. I think that's around what we want. All right, now let's add an array modifier. So let's add the array right here put zero on the top one here and the bottom one. That's the one we're going to play with and just bring it up to where you like the gap between the two. And we're going to give it 200 on the count. So this is all of our duplicates. So the order is very important. So make sure to follow it. Otherwise, you're not going to get the shape that I'm making. So let's add the simple deform. Make sure it's on twist and change the axis to Z. And so as you can see, it'll start twisting it. Now, 36 degrees is the max it'll go. We want more, so we'll just hit copy and it'll twist it more. So it does that. Let's add another simple deform and that will be the bend right there. And then as you can see, we're going all the way to the end and it makes our circle. We have a little bit of a problem. These last faces are intersecting. So let's just take right here on angle and just bring it back a little bit, just like that. And it's seamless. And this is really cool. If you go to the array, you can actually bring it down or the more it's a smoother twist. So but we're going to go back to 200 because I like the way it looks on that. But you do whatever you want. All right, now let's bring it to the center. So hit your tilde key and that's the one at the very uh, top left right next to the escape key. And we're going to click left, transform and let's bring it right to the center. So you can see on that blue line and then we'll bring it up to the green line right there. Now it's perfectly center. Let's bring our plane back in and then let's scale down. All right, now we have this. Let's make that bowl looking thing right here. We're going to model this now. So we're going to add an icosphere, shift A, put it in there, and then we're going to bring it up a little bit, hit tab, and we're going to subdivide it. So make it smooth and give it 10 cuts. And we'll just scale it up till it passes up our model here. Now, if you hit tab, make sure in face select, just select a face here. If you hold down control and plus and you just click it a bunch, it'll spread just like that. And we want to write about right about there and then X and click faces. And now we have this. We need to add a solidify right here. It will solidify it just like right about there. And then we'll add a smoothing modifier and that'll just smooth everything out for us. As you can see, smooth it out. Let's make it a little bit thicker. And then just like that. And then we're going to left click, shade smooth. And now we have our bowl. So on here, on the bowl, hit R twice and just sort of shape it to wherever you want, right about there. I like to cover it up just there to add a little bit more interest on composition. And now let's add our camera. So Shift A and let's add the camera. And we're going to hit tilde and click left. It'll be that one. And then Control Alt Zero. And now we have camera and quite center it we'll hit G and just eyeball the center and then let's duplicate the bottom so shift D R Y 90 and just bring it to the back here and then we'll hit zero to go back to our camera view click on your camera and then click the camera icon here and change the focal length to 85 that'll give us a better lens it's basically a 85 millimeter lens for any of you who do photography so basically there's three lights in the scene an HDRI for the ambient light one light back here and an area light here. And what that's doing, it's giving us a nice moody lighting setup. So let's do that. Let's add our area light. So bring that here. We're going to bring it up, bring it a little bit to the forward, right over here. Just sort of make it 
And then if you hit R twice, you can see where it's pointing. And then we'll hit S to scale it. I'm just going to rotate a little bit. So that looks about right. Let's check it out on the render. We're going to set it to a brightness of 600 right about there. It looks really bright because all our materials are basically white. But as we add darker materials, it's going to absorb that. So let's add our HDRI. So we're going to be using HDRI Haven. It's all free. It's going to be linked in the description. I would suggest using an indoor HDRI. I'm going to use this one and download the 4K version of that. All right, now we're going to click on this world icon on the color. Click this little circle. Click environment texture and navigate to your HDRI. That's this one. And then let's check out the render. Right now it's on the strength of one and it's too much. And we just wanted to fill up these shadow areas so it's not completely black. So we're going to have a strength of 0 0.2. And that's what we're going to have here. All right, let's go into shading. So we're going to use Adobe's color palette website. I'm going to link the specific palette. But if you don't want to use that, you can click explore. And there are tons of other palettes for you to try out. So to use it, click on a color. And then right here on hex, highlight it, control C and then click on the object. In this case, the dark color will be for the background. Click on the shader, new shader. On base color, you're gonna click on this little hex thing right there, and then you'll paste in that number. And then if you look at the render, we pasted it in just like that. I'm gonna put that same material in the bottom. I would suggest using the brightest shader for the point of interest. In this case, will be this interesting twisted. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna use this one, copy that and just the brighter color makes a point of interest and in better composition paste that in and then we can check it out now we have this nice khaki color I'm gonna scale up my area light because it's not really covering my scene very well now we have a little bit better lighting so go in and add whatever shader and color you want I'm gonna add the light blue to this and then come back all right, so I changed my area light to its strength of 1000 and my HDRI to a strength of 0 0.5. And now we have this nice coloring, nice and moody. Let's add one more light to the back and that'll be our point light. So point light, bring it here, bring it up, give it a strength of 500 and that should do the trick and bring it up just like that. And now we have a little highlight here on the bottom and then we have the light here, a little bit coming out here, it makes it nice and interesting and you have a cool moody render. For your render settings, I would give the render about 500 samples, add, add denoising, keep it at the default settings, those are pretty good, and 1920 by 1080 is pretty good, but if you want to add that, make it 4K, just type in 200% here, and now it's a 4K render. And then up here, you would hit render, render image. So there you go, you made a really cool, dark, moody render. Send it to me on Instagram, I'd love to see it, and thanks for watching.